Good morning. Good morning. Christ is in our midst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's Gospel reading is taken from Matthew. We also read it a little differently in the Gospel according to Luke. Same story, it appears to be. It's a, a man, a centurion, who has a servant who is ill and comes to Jesus to have his servant healed. And there's something about this story that's very beautiful. Jesus commends his faith. In fact, he says he hasn't seen faith anywhere like it throughout all of Israel. And he sees it in this man, this centurion. So I thought we should look at this. What is it about this man's faith that is so different? What is it about his faith that Jesus really commends. And so this man, as we know, is a centurion. A centurion is a Roman soldier. He is in charge of a hundred other soldiers. So he's just not a private. He's in charge of a hundred others uh, that he has authority below him. He's a big shot. He's an officer. He can pretty much do whatever he wants to do. If you remember at this time, for the uh, Jewish people, they are under the occupation of the Romans. The Romans are in charge. And a Roman centurion can do basically whatever he wants. Now he has this servant who's ill, and he believed that Jesus could do something, that Jesus could heal him. He probably, in his work as a centurion and covering that area, came across Jesus, uh, Jesus a few times, and perhaps he saw him performing some miracle, healing some other person. And over the course of some period of time, this centurion, this Roman soldier, came to believe that Jesus could heal his servant. Now you have to remember, he's Roman, he's not Jewish. The Romans are pagan. They believe in many different gods. The theology of the Romans is very different than a Jewish theology. Jesus is speaking to the Jews and in their own books, in what we call the Old Testament, are prophesies telling us that the Christ is coming, that Jesus is coming. So he would expect them to understand before a Roman centurion who does not have the benefit of the theology that the Jewish people do. And here's this Roman centurion who not only believes that Jesus could do it, but he humbles himself and comes to Jesus. He says to Jesus, first he calls him Lord. Centurions don't go about calling Jews Lord even if he didn't mean it in a theological way like we do, the Son of God, he meant it at least in a very, very respectful way, Lord. He could have come to Jesus and said, because he was a centurion after all, a Roman centurion, heal my servant, that's an order. He could have done that. And that's a lot of times how the Romans dealt with the Jews, but he didn't do that. He goes to Jesus and he asks him. And then Jesus, who's impressed by the centurion's faith and, and humility and love for his servant, 
He says, I'll go and heal him. Most of the time in the scriptures when Jesus heals someone, he's in contact with them. He's right there, they are in his presence. He lays his hands on them, he makes spittle, he makes mud from spittle, anoints their eyes or their ears, he touches them in some way. But this man says, Lord, and this is something that shows you how great his faith is, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come to my home. But I believe if you say it right now, he will be healed. I believe it. I don't need you to come and do it. I know you can do it. And then he relates how he as a officer, if he tells a soldier to do something, he doesn't worry about it anymore. He knows that that soldier will do it. And he trusts that if Jesus says, you are healed, he'll be healed. So Jesus marvels at this man. His faith, his humility, and his love for his servant. I think those three things are very powerful here. In Luke's Gospel, it adds a little bit more. It says elders uh, from the area, other Jewish people came up to Jesus and said, Lord, you should help him, for he is a good man. He loves our people, and he has helped build us a synagogue. This is in Luke's Gospel. So we know that the man loves others, helps others, even the Jewish people who he's occupying, but as a human being, he does what he can to help others. And he's so concerned about his servant as well that he lowers himself, but he probably didn't think he was lowering himself. He probably thought, I am in the presence of greatness. I am in the presence of divinity. And we, when we realize we are in the presence of divinity, it's just very natural to be lowered, to be humbled. And so that's what this man does. There's a certain warmth in him. If you can think about it, just picture this a little bit. There's a certain warmth in the man that Jesus experiences, this warmth of faith within him that's more than a belief. It's, it's this trusting, placing his humble trust in the Lord. Oftentimes we can have a belief, but we don't have that warmth inside us that the Lord saw in the centurion. And when we have belief, but we don't have warmth, when we don't have that active trust, then it's not the faith that the Lord calls us to. And then the Lord says, truly I tell you that the children of Abraham will be cast out, but those will come from east and west to come into the kingdom, meaning there will be Jews who have the theology, but don't have the faith, who won't enter the kingdom. And there will be pagans who will enter the kingdom. This was a pretty big statement from Jesus. And I think we need to look at that. Here we are, we're in the church now, we, we have the faith. The faith has been given to us. But we need to have more than the faith. We have to have faith. We have to have that warmth in us, that, that trust that comes overflowing with humility, 
to the Lord, that faith that the centurion had, that warmth that he had. I want to uh, share with you and end uh, this morning's sermon with a quote from St. Porphyrios. He's discussing what humility is. Complete trust in God, that's what humility is. Complete obedience to God without protest, without reaction, even when some things seem difficult and unreasonable. Abandonment to the hands of God. The words we repeat during the Divine Liturgy say it all. Let us commend our whole life to Christ our God. The secret prayer of the priest says the same thing. We commend our whole life and hope to you, <coughs> our loving Master, and we entreat you and beseech you and supplicate you. To you, O Lord, we leave everything. This is what trust in God is. This is holy humility. This is what transfigures a person and makes him a God-man. The humble person is conscious of his inner state, and however unsightly it is, he does not lose his personality. He knows he is sinful and is grieved by the fact, but he does not despair and does not annihilate himself. The person who possesses holy humility does not speak at all. That is, he doesn't react. He accepts to be criticized and rebuked by others without getting angry and defending himself. He does not lose his equilibrium. The opposite happens with the egoist, the person who has a sense of inferiority. To begin with, he seems humble, but if he is goaded a little, he immediately loses his calm and is irritated and upset. The humble person believes that all things depend on Christ and that Christ gives his grace and in that way he makes progress. The person who possesses holy humility lives even now in the earthly uncreated church. He always has the joy of Christ even in the most displeasing circumstances. The humble person is one who places his trust so much in God that when difficult things happen, even if someone criticizes him, it doesn't turn into anger, but their trust is so complete that they are still at rest in the Lord. This is what the Lord saw in uh, the centurion. I pray that we may also have that warmth that the centurion had, in addition to the faith that our Lord has given us. Faith, however, without that warmth, without that trust, is not a true and living faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Yes.